Well, hello, and welcome to the Tammy Hudson Pillar podcast. I'm Tammy Hudson Pillar. If you're watching us on YouTube, welcome. We are in a four part series on a topic called Love Holds. And we actually have a women's conference coming up here in Anaheim, California on February 2nd and 3rd. We're so excited about the conference. We want to invite you to come. If you just need to get out of wherever you are in the middle of winter right now and you want to come to Southern California, join us at our Love Holds Conference. Uh, We've got some great guest speakers, and it's going to be a great time to come together and be encouraged and inspired on this topic, Love Holds. In this four-part series, I'm talking to you just about that very theme that love truly holds. There's a scripture in the Bible that says love covers a multitude of sin. And when someone has hurt you or wronged you or pained you, there's something about love that you just can't fight against. In this series, we began with the two-part series of, first of all, God, that truly God does hold us, that the love of God holds us. Let me tell you right now, girlfriend, there is no love like the love of God. And so as we press into the love of the Father and we understand that He holds us and He caresses us and He teaches us about His perfect love, that it truly is a divine love. But then we moved into family, and we talked about how we need to extend love to our family, how we need to bridge a gap in areas with our family, with our children and and our our parents and, and those that we call our extended family. But in this part of the series, I want to talk to you today about the fact that love holds in friendships. Now, if you're like me, I've had great friendships. I've been blessed with great friends in my life. But To be honest with you, some of my friends have hurt me deeper than than anything you can imagine. Some of my greatest pain have come from my deepest friendships. And I've been disappointed. I've been hurt. I've been talked about. And I want to talk a little bit about how do you have a healthy friendship? How can you love through a friendship? How do you love with God's love and not give up on a friend? Let me put it this way. There are different categories of friends. So think about it this way. We have acquaintances, and those are people that maybe a girlfriend invites you to a party and you meet two or three friends and you all have something in common, but they're really just an acquaintance. They're not a deep friend. Or maybe your colleagues, maybe people that you work with and you're with them eight hours a day. You obviously have your job uh, in common and you call them a friend, but you don't do anything with them other than work. Uh, Then we all obviously have close friends, people that we share our soul with, our pain with, our sorrow, our joys. And then we have best friends. We have somebody that really we trust, we know, we confide in. My husband has this theory that if you die and you have five relentless friends at the end of your life, you are a blessed person. A relentless friend is someone who is with you in good times and bad times. They don't care what you've done. They don't care who you are. They love you unconditionally. So as you begin to think right now in your mind, what are my, who are my friends and what classifies them as a friend? I've written this and I thought it's pretty good. Friends are the family that we choose ourselves. Friends are the family we choose ourselves. I laugh with my sisters all the time. I have three incredible sisters, but I tell them all the time, if we weren't sisters, we probably wouldn't be friends because the truth is we really have nothing in common other than our bloodline, other than the fact that we shared clothes growing up and the same roof over our head, but we're so different that we really don't have a lot of commonalities. But the thing about a friend is someone you get to pick because you have things in common with them. You trust them. You love them. They, they, they carry you when you fall down. That's what a friend is. A good friendship is something to value and protect. So what I want to do in this podcast, in this YouTube that you're watching with me, I want to walk you through some steps and some strategies on how to build a good friendship. You see, the closer we become to someone, the more invested we become in their emotions and their behavior. So as I began to write this particular lesson, two girls came to mind, my best friends. One of them lives in Denver, Colorado, and one of them lives in um, New Jersey. And they were girls that I met in ministry when we lived in Denver, Colorado, my best friend there, and when I was in ministry in New Jersey, and they have remained my two best friends. I can tell them anything, and it doesn't matter what I tell them. They don't judge me. They don't stop loving me. 
They may speak into me, they may challenge me, they may sharpen me, but they have been with me through thick and thin. They can handle my down times and my high times. We are more likely to be reactive to our best friends. So what happens when your best friend has hurt you or wronged you? You're going to speak into him. You're going to go, you know what? I don't feel that was fair to say that to me that way. Tell me what you're thinking. So what I want to talk to you about in this podcast is how do I develop this best friend kind of friendship with someone, someone that I give them permission to speak into my life and that I get to speak into their life. Um, let me just kind of walk you through a couple things right now as I'm looking over my notes. I believe that when, um, when, we're, when we have feelings of frustration, when we have feelings of disappointment, these friends have both permission and they know how to, because of my emotions, speak into me. So let's talk about how can we avoid a falling out with someone who's been a long and trusted friend. In the Word of God, the Scripture says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another love. Make every effort to keep the unity of spirit through the bond of peace. When I think of this verse in Ephesians 4, verses 2 through 3, it reminds me of my friend in New Jersey. I'm going to go ahead and tell you her name's Gloria. I hope she watches this. She was my dearest friend. We would take walks together. She would walk me through heartache, whether it be through the church and my marriage with my children, and we would process through this. Then when it was time for us to leave New Jersey and we moved here to California, it was really hard for my girlfriend. Now for me, I was excited. It was a new adventure for me. It was a new opportunity. But she felt that I was abandoning or leaving. She saw our friendship that it would never be the same. And I remember it was several months before we really were able to talk about this. And she said, I didn't realize that even living far away, you could still be my friend. Now we don't walk all the time together. We don't talk as much as we did. But because the friendship went so deep in root with honesty, because we were able to talk about deep things like my marriage or my children or what God wants for me or my career or writing a book, she said, someone that I completely trusted. But I had to be able to say to her, Gloria, just because I'm moving doesn't mean that we're not going to still be good friends. What you want to be able to do with the best friend is to be honest. And that's what this verse says, make every effort to keep the unity and the spirit through the bond of peace. I had to sow in to my friend, I love you. I will always be here. Our relationship's going to change, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to have a good relationship. Who is that person right now? Think of that person in your life that is a dear and trusted friend. Someone that's honest with you, will speak into you, will love you, but it doesn't matter what happens, they are a relentless friend. There's another verse in 1 Peter 4, 8, and it says, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers heartache and disappointment and pain. Love at all times. So who is it that you have a deep friendship and you trust them? In a moment, when I talk to you about the steps of a friendship, we're going to deal with, you've got to be able to trust them, that they have your back and you have their back. You don't worry when you walk away after a blow up or after you've really shared something deep that they're going to say anything negative about you because they're a trusted friend. Jesus said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. Now, that really makes sense. Love God, you, yeah, you, girlfriend, love him with everything that is in you, your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. And then he goes on, he says, But the second commandment is just like it. You are to love your neighbor as yourself. So when I look at a friendship, I have to make sure that I have a healthy respect for myself and that same kind of respect I have for myself, I have for my best friend, that I have for that person that I'm trusting and I'm pouring myself into. He says, there is no commandment greater than this. And this is found in Mark 12, that he says, this is the kind of love, love yourself and love your neighbor the way you love yourself. You see, the key to a lasting friendship is gratitude and loyalty. Can you say that with me? Gratitude and loyalty. Now think in your mind right now, who is your best friend? Maybe you have one or two best friends. In this house right now, in the studio, the producer of this radio and, and really YouTube is a girl named Lisa. You don't get to meet her. You don't get to see her. She's behind the screen. But I would call her a best friend. 
She has been a loyal friend to me. I know she has my back. She wants the best for me. I've never heard her say anything negative about me. I know that I can come to her when I'm discouraged, when I'm defeated. She will speak life back into me. Often it's the very words I've spoken into her. But there's never a time when I get off the phone or when I've texted her or when I've talked to her that I thought, I wonder what she's going to think about me. Because she's a trusted and loyal friend. That's what we have to develop. And literally, my girlfriend, if you can have one or two of these in a lifetime, you're fortunate. Let me give you a few coaching steps that I think will be very helpful. So here's your coaching assignment in this one. Number one, forgive when you have been wronged. Right now, some of you have lost a good friendship because you have not been willing to forgive. It's someone who maybe their roots didn't go deep enough yet to be a trusted and loyal friend, but you gave up on them too soon. You need to forgive the wrong that's been done to you. You need to move on. Don't just give in on the relationship. Fight for your friendship. So you may need to go back and have coffee and say, you know, Susie, we've been good friends for a long time. And this certain thing that happened, this circumstance that came and drove a wedge between our friendship has divided us. And I don't want it to. You have been a good friend with me for years. And I want us to get back to where we were. I want you to forgive me. And I want to be able to forgive you. That's number one. Number two, be available when needed. You know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loveth at all times. So my friend, you have to be available. If it is a good, deep friendship, this is love holds that we're talking about. If this relationship is going to hold, then you need to be there when she needs you. When there is a crisis in her life, Not just that she's there for you, but you have to be there for her. So often in our friendship, it is one-sided. It's the one who's the stronger, the alpha in the relationship. And it's always about you. It's always about you. Or it's always about her. It's always about her. A, a, A relationship that is mutual is a relationship that is strong, and you care as much about her as she cares about you. So be available when uh, she needs you. Number three, don't gossip. If someone will gossip to you, then they will gossip about you. Safety is important in a friendship. So a deep, lasting friendship is someone that you know they're not going to gossip about you. You'll be able to tell if it's an acquaintance or if it's just a close friend or if it's a best friend, based on if they gossip about you. So it's really important that you have a trusted friendship. And when you say something, it never comes back to you that they're speaking about you. And then number four, accept their shortcomings, accept their flaws. Girlfriend, remember that no one's perfect. They will disappoint you just like you will disappoint them. That's when love holds. It holds through thick and thin, ups and downs, disappointments and heartache. A good friend loveth at all times, and love holds. So accept them for who they are. If they've disappointed you, talk to them about it. Go out, do a spa day, have a cup of coffee, go for a walk and say, you know what? I believe that we've got something worth fighting for. I trust you and I love you. But this came back to me, and I need to process through this with you because it's worth fighting for if it's a good friend. And number five, value and respect one another. A true friendship is based on respect and value. You know, I tell you all the time here at Women of Influence, one of the things that I've learned about myself is unless I love and value and respect myself, no one else will. So it's got to start here. I have to love and respect and value myself. Then I have to understand how to do that in my friendship. So I have to respect my girlfriend in Denver who's going through personal crises in her life. How are you? What's going on with you? How can I help you? My friend in New Jersey, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? My friend Lisa here in the studio, my friend Lori, who's always there for me. I have to say, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? It can't always just be about me. A true friendship is a mutual friendship. So make sure you're asking, how are you? How can I help you? That's what holds is a mutual, loving, respectful friendship with one another. Well, that concludes our fourth, or actually this is our third, we'll get into our fourth, our third love holds. It love, love holds in friendship. So let me ask you right now, begin to think in your mind, who are two or three friends that are your relentless friends? 
Call him today. Email or text him and say, I just want to tell you that I love you today. I just want to thank you for being a relentless friend. Thank you for being there for me. And I want to make sure that I am a good friend to you. Well, once again, I want to invite you to our Love Holds conference. That's really what precipitated this whole series of Love Holds, this four-part series. But if you're available or if you want to check us out on Facebook Live or live stream, it's February 2nd and 3rd. You can check us out at womenofinfluence.today or you can check me out at TammyHotsonPillar.com. Also, we want to ask you to check us out on all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I believe God's doing a mighty work here in Southern California with Women of Influence and with our story clubs, and we want you to be a part of that. So email us and tell us how we can pray for you and how you can get involved here with Women of Influence. We pray God's richest blessing over you and your family in Jesus' name. Have a great day. God bless.